All right, good morning YouTube. It is Nick with NK Landscaping again as usual. We got a brand new job for you today. So basically, you can see Kurt's got the enclosed trailer behind me. And then we have the KX on the gooseneck with a bunch of Unilock pavers. So we're running a deal right now because we have some leftover unused, so these are brand new Unilock pavers that came off of other jobs. We actually, there are some that came off as extras and some that are brand new. They got overstocked back in the COVID days. So we're running a deal for our repeat clients that we're basically giving them the pavers for free. They just have to pay labor and all the other materials. Pretty good deal, right? So we're actually going out to my church, the rectory, so the house that the priest lives in on the property was a new build, a modular, quite a number of years ago, and they never got a walkway put in. So they just have a gravel path from the driveway to the front door with a concrete stoop. We're gonna be putting in a walkway for them and a small patio in the back for them to put their grill on and just have a little spot in the back below the deck. So we're gonna head over there now. I will check in with you when we get there. Probably three day job, um, a lot of moving parts, but let's get moving and we'll uh, show you what's going on. So here we are. So as you can see, the rectory is above us. A very steep driveway to get up there. So this truck is staying downtown and uh, I'll unload the excavator here. Uh, the pallets we won't need till tomorrow, so that's fine. It's nice having a two-speed excavator, I'll tell you what. Just a quick tip, if you're gonna park a vehicle like this, on an incline like this, of course, you want to set your parking brake. But put the truck in four-wheel drive because in this case, we unloaded the BX, not that that's super heavy. But when you get that machine on the, the pivot point of this trailer, it reduces the weight on the back wheel of the truck. And there have been instance, instances, I've even had it happen with the excavator in my Dodge, where the back wheels pick up enough to lose traction and this truck will just go down the hill. And that's the last thing you want to happen. So four-wheel drive parking brake we're gonna get some stuff marked out here so here's what we have to work with in the front like I said this is a modular and they put in the stoop and everything but no walkway so I think we're doing a four foot wide walkway it's gonna be Unilock Treo with a Holland sailor course and then in the back a small patio so Kurt's gonna get this all marked out we're gonna try our best to separate this gravel because right on the other side of the truck is a little parking area We'll put it in there, and then once we get down to the dirt, we'll probably end up dumping it over the cliff there. So let's get this marked out, and we're going to start with digging this one. Look at that. So we are at full depth with our slope. We do need to cut the driveway here so we have a nice straight transition. Not much, just the tapered edge basically is gonna come off. Kurt's getting the driveway marked out so we can figure that cut out and then we'll do that. Move into the back, get that dug, and then we are out of here to go get the dump trailer and some stone.
cut an asphalt. Nice. All right, guys, we are in the back now. So before we get the excavator back here, I needed to make another cut. As you can see, the deck comes down onto this concrete pad. Now, the concrete pad is supporting the stairs. So we need to leave as much of it as possible, but we're gonna be doing a patio. I think it's gonna go up to the deck, out maybe 12 feet, and then from the wall of the house all the way out to the edge of the deck. It's not huge, but we're gonna cut this concrete as close as we can to that step. So it still has enough under it, as you can see there, for a footing, but we don't wanna build a patio out around this. It would look crummy, so let's make this cut and then we will get the excavator back here to dig. Kurt, what's the size of this patio? Eight by 12. Eight by 12, okay. And that goes eight foot to the edge of the deck? Or uh, coming I, out? I moved it, so we're just gonna start at the edge of the stairs. Oh, okay. And go out eight feet. Okay, and yeah. And the deck is 12. So we're not going into the deck, we're gonna start at the edge of the steps here. I think we'll take a little bit of the extra base stone and we'll just throw it in there as decorative stone. Yeah, decorative stone. There, there's some one, two inch stone under the deck, so we'll just kind of fill in each side. Well, yeah, all right, make a cut. We have a generator here that is propane powered. So luckily the propane runs that way. But what you have to notice is we have electrical and propane lines, but at the same time, the only electrical and propane lines that come out of this tank go down and it looks like this way. So there's a gas line at the house there. And then you need to wonder where the rest of that gas line is. So there's the electricity right there. So that means that the generator power line runs that way. So we need to be mindful of all that before we go and start digging crazy. I do have the ripper on, so I'm gonna to try to pull up this concrete pad here, and then we'll figure out what we need to do to get the rest of the cut on that. But just be mindful of your job site surroundings. Take a look, kind of study what you're working with before you just go putting rippers and things in the ground. So let's get to it. Too easy. No thumb required. Not too shabby. <clears throat> so yeah, they got some one to two inch gravel down under it, not much. Um, but yeah, same story as the front. We're gonna get this excavated about nine inches, nine to 10 inches below the top of that concrete. Uh, this dirt is gonna go behind the excavator over there. There's a low spot, we're gonna fill that in. So I'll probably put it in a pile and we'll haul it out of here with the BX once we get that back here. But it's time to start digging. Got everything dug here. So we got some more gutter line. There are two ground rods. And then we thought that we might have seen some sand from the generator, like a 
either the gas line or electric line, but I don't think so. It looks like the electric line runs in right about here. Um, big plus of using the steel wrist, I didn't have to move the excavator, uh, except for forward and backward a couple times. Um, I didn't have to reposition to dig a square hole. Lawn damage is one of the most time consuming things on all of our jobs, wouldn't you say so? Yep. Because you have the whole job done and then all of a sudden you have to bring more equipment in to do lawn repair. So being able to drive this machine in once and out once without moving it the whole time you're digging is a huge plus. It disturbs the least amount of lawn and it's another reason why we have the 33 instead of something bigger because it's it's low ground impact. So we need to run out now. We forgot our plate compactor this morning, like noobs. Uh, we're gonna run out, grab the dump trailer, and uh, probably grab a load of stone and the plate compactor, and then we'll come back and, and get some stone installed. So let's get it done. So it's actually day two. Yesterday, we realized we had a meeting to get to after we left from the job, so it didn't make sense to make our way all the way back. We have the dump trailer hooked up now. I have two things we gotta put in the truck. We need the plate compactor since we forgot that. And we need the road of star since we're gonna be screening out some dirt. So let's get that loaded. Then we're gonna head off to the quarry, get our stone, and get off for the job. Alright guys, we dumped our ones and twos and we unloaded our attachments. I'm now going to bring the Rotostar in the back, screen through that pile of dirt we dug out yesterday because once that's screened and we bring that concrete slab out here, the excavator is done in the back. Kurt is working on packing in everything with the plate compactor. He's going to do the front, then bring the plate compactor around the rear, get that done, and then we're going to start spreading gravel in the back. We're going to basically work our way out from the back. We got a really nice pile of screen dirt here. That looks really good. So that'll be used to backfill around the patio and then fix any damage that we did do. I just busted up this concrete. There is some rebar in it, but I busted up the best I can. So Kurt's just gonna haul that out into the driveway and stockpile that for now because the excavator is done back here. So we're gonna get that out and uh, finish up with the patio over here. So off camera here, I made that final cut on the bottom of the steps here. So that concrete is now kind of sloping down under the steps. It's still completely supported. We haven't ruined any support for those wondering. And we got that out of there. So we're gonna move up front now. This base is completely installed. You know, the main base, not the quarter inch. Uh, we're gonna get the front all up to spec with the main base. We're gonna go run out and get our quarter inch get back and we can start screeding out uh, probably starting back here but this is coming along really nicely
that is to grade. So we have a quarter inch slope from here to the end of the stoop over that eight feet. That leaves us with two inches of rise. So if you step right off the corner here, it'll be an eight inch step right in the middle. You're gonna work with a seven inch step and right on the end, it's a six inch step. Right at the end of this stoop, we transition to a new slope. So that is, this is five and a half inches over 10 foot. Um, and that's a little bit steeper, but it's not too bad. Um, and then at the end, we're basically gonna have to twist the patio uh, manually to meet the grade of the driveway. So we'll probably taper that in over six feet or something, but that's looking good. We are done with our one and two one to two inch gravel and after we eat lunch we're gonna go out and get our quarter inch after we dump our concrete which is loaded up in the trailer there so everything's coming along really well i'll tell you what this is going to be the strongest walkway and patio we've ever installed because of this one to two inch gravel this stuff is sturdy That's looking good. Everything is screeded out back here. So where we have a quarter inch per foot slope coming this way. So once again, you're a little smaller of a step on that far corner and a little bit more of a step on the left side. Still, once the patio's in, it'll be very nice. We're gonna pull these rods now, fill in the holes the best we can. We'll probably just leave a pile of quarter inch for tomorrow to touch up anything that needs to be touched up. And now we're gonna go screed out the front walkway. All right, so this front section, we're gonna do the same thing as the back. We're gonna lay our pipes, except we have two separate grades. We're gonna do our first set of pipes will be just the width of that stoop. That will be set at our quarter inch per foot or two and a half inches per 10 foot. And then from the stoop to the driveway here will be set at five and a half inches per 10 foot. So that'll be a separate set of pipes. Uh, and then there'll just be that kind of ramp right in the middle. We'll basically even it out once we lay the pavers, just so it's not such a sharp, you know, grade change. But let's get that done. All right, so like I said, we have two different slopes. It's actually technically three since the driveway slopes that way. As we make that transmission, the walkway is going to be level in this plane. But as we get closer to this, the walkway is actually going to twist. And how we do that is using Unilock bricks on the end of the paver screeds to basically set the height at the driveway. And that will allow us to kind of twist everything through here. So now that's all set and we're gonna come through here and fill this up and that'll be, uh, that'll be it for this screeding. All right, good morning guys. This is day three, the hopefully last day on the job. We just dropped the dump trailer and we are headed to the store this morning. I'm gonna pick up a couple things and then get to the job to start laying pavers. So that is the part that goes quick and uh, you really start to see the project come together. So check in with you when we uh, do something cool. Kurt's pulling the pipes from last night. We'll get these little dips filled in in a second. Truck is up here. We just fit with enough room to let the clients in and out. So I can't lift these full pallets, as you know. I can do about three layers. So luckily having the trailer so close, we can kind of just walk pa pavers back and forth uh, or load the BX. Um, that's why we're starting with this one first. And by then we should be able to be able to lift this and I can get it closer to the back patio. So I'm gonna set you guys up on a time lapse and you're gonna watch us rip through this install. For those of you wondering about capability, I guess I can pick up a little more than I thought. You just have to be really close to the machine. That is most of a pallet of Holland. It's probably 70%. I, I don't know what that weighs. It's gotta be at least 1800 pounds if I had to assume. I, I'm not sure, but wow. Um, yeah, we're gonna get this transported closer to the site and uh, start laying. So we have our string lines set up here. Basically, we're referencing the foundation of the house. So this string line is gonna be the left edge of that walkway. 
It's 105 and a half inches off the foundation here. And at the stoop, the stoop is gonna have its own border sailor course. So that walkway is actually gonna be farther in on that stoop side and it's gonna come out nearly a foot. Uh, so Kurt is setting up our sailor course just to get a reference. We're starting, you always wanna start against something with a square angle because you can always work off of that. So we're starting in that back corner. We're gonna work our way out, we're gonna bump it out and then work our way down. You'll see it, you'll see it come to fruition in a second. I'm about to make my first cuts here. Those are gonna be the cornered sailor course blocks. So I think Kurt said I gotta cut six of those. So I'm gonna work on those now. He's gonna work on laying. We still have the trayo on the trailer because this is just the soldier course we're working on. So let me make some cuts, we'll get to it. So did you guys enjoy that? Not too bad. We gotta go through now, we gotta straighten everything out. Make sure everything is the way we want it before we literally set it in stone. We're gonna install our perma, poly sand, compact it, and then this will be done as far as the building goes. Then we'll move on to the back, keep on going. So let's do it. So we're gonna be using Ah, this, that's weird. You see this? First that one, whatever. Uh, this is Perma Edge. We like using this. It's not cheap, uh, but it works really well. And you basically wanna mix one gallon of water with this stuff uh, per bucket. I saw this tip online, I cannot remember who said it, but go in there and make a mark three inches from the bottom of this bucket and that's a gallon. So I don't measure it out. I measure my three inches. That's a perfect gallon. Mix this up. Kurt straightened everything out. So once this is mixed, we'll go down the line, get the perma. He's gonna rake back a little bit of the quarter inch on the edges, and then we will uh, get this in. So let's do it. Oh boy, you guys tell me. You know, it's basic. It is a very basic walkway. But I think out of all the walkways we've ever done, this one has come out the nicest. Everything's perfectly sloped and transitioned into the driveway. Those colors look awesome. They match the house really well. And they can stop having a gravel walkway make it easier on the plow guys i know they were saying that kind of stunk is the the plow guys had to shovel a gravel walkway that's no fun we are moving on to the back we're not going to do any finish work around this probably today i know we said this is a three-day project i think it's gonna be four so let's get in the back let's install the patio and then we're gonna go home so let's bang it out
we are nearing completion now. I know I lost you on time lapse. The uh, the battery died, and Kurt just thought the camera was playing a nice song. <laughs> Forgot to tell me that you know maybe maybe your camera made some noise. Um, what we're doing here, there's ne there's never ever enough of these small bricks, no matter what you use. Beacon Hill, Treo, it, I just they sh they short you on them. <laughs> they assume you're always building humongous patios, and when you build small patios. You need a lot of small bricks because on the edge, if we're if we're coming to the part in the pattern where you need half of a square, or a third of the big guy, then you just use the little guy. Basically, and you do that yeah, all is. the time. So what what we're doing, uh, we don't want to bring bricks back. You know that that would just make no sense. So we are making our own small bricks. So with the big guys, you get two. You don't use that center cut. It's no good. And then with the square ones you get two as well just there's no off cut so and for all those keyboard warriors out there that say oh I don't put any cuts in my patio I'll just accept the loss and, and account for extra well you can't even find them because we have a nice IQ saw with a very nice blade on it and the cuts are so nice you you can't see them. he's right try to pick out the cuts I'll hold you really still for a second freeze frame that try to point out a cut I mean, clearly not like, an obvious not an obvious cut like that but like in the middle of that patio show me the cuts yeah if you're using a precise tool and you're good at your measurements there's there's no problem with using cuts in my opinion you cannot pick them out the client will definitely not be able to pick them out a professional hardscaper can probably find a few of them but they look great they yep. really do so I'm gonna make some cuts and we'll use this up Calculate out what we need, go grab it, finish this one up. All right, guys, look at that. So I didn't know if we were gonna be able to finish this one today because we ran out of poly sand. Not, we didn't, we didn't well, we, we, we didn't run out. We almost ran out because two of the bags of poly sand that we got, at least a quarter of the bag was unusable, it was wet. And even the rest of the bag was a little wet um which made it a little tricky so we're gonna try to get that replaced tomorrow uh get two new bags but kurt was able to make it work there's just enough everything else is cleaned up so we will be back tomorrow to put the finishing touches on everything it's gonna be a quick short day uh spreading topsoil seed and straw or i wouldn't call that topsoil but screen soil seed and straw so i will see you guys tomorrow all right guys, we got a little bit of a break in the rain now that we're here. We're gonna get this topsoil spread and I'm probably not gonna film much. I'll bring you in when everything's done. We are all packed up and done. So who wants to see the finished results? That is nice. Almost four foot finished width when you do the Unilock specs with the no cut edge, which is not a true no cut edge. It's just, you only have to cut half blocks every once in a while. I forget what you end up with. What was the full width on this? Uh, it's just under four feet. Just under four feet. So that looks good. Let's head on into the back. Very little lawn damage thanks to the BX and of course the steel wrist. <coughs> and coming back here we have an eight by 12 patio. One to two inch stone on either side of the stairs. That matches what stone is already under the porch. We cut that concrete slab so it is patio right to the stairs and the slab still supports the stairs. We have a nice slope coming this way so all the water drains off in that bottom corner. So as usual guys, I wanna thank you again for watching, sticking around. Let me know how this one turned out 
how you would have done it different, what you would have changed, or if you like it just the way it is. Big thank you for me and Kurt. If you haven't already, go check out NK Garage. Tons of tool videos if you're into that kind of stuff. I know we are. So, I'll see you on the next one. Like, comment, subscribe if you're into that. If not, you're not going to hurt my feelings either. I will see you on the next one. Have a good rest of the day.